Hi everyone! Today we are in lesson 2, three phase circuits, and we are going to continue where we finished in the last video, which was in section 2.4, independent three phase circuit. In this section, we said that we can construct a three phase system by the union of three independent single phase circuits. However, the problem that you can see here is that we need six independent cables because we have the phase cable and the neutral cable for each of the three circuits in red, green and black color. Is there any other way in which we can connect the conductors to have a three-phase circuit? Yes. There are two types of configuration which are quite common and the first is the balanced star connection. In the balanced star connection what we have is that we are going to need only four conductors instead of six. So we are going to have the three phases those are the conductors from the three generators that must be equal, same absolute value in the voltage and same frequency. And each phase conductor supplies a load that in a balance system would have the same absolute value and the same angle. And then here we have the neutral conductor. So the currents flow from the generator through the phase conductor, they supply the load, and then they return through the neutral conductor. That is called star connection or also Y connection. In this case, instead of requiring three independent neutral conductors, we have only one conductor, okay? So here at point N prime, the three currents IA, IB and IC, they are summed at this point and the sum of the three currents returns through the neutral conductor. This is very convenient because, as we have already explained, the sum of the three currents must be zero. So that is due to the fact that the three currents if the system is balanced and symmetrical, then the three currents A, V and C, they have the same absolute value and they are shifted with an angle of 120 degrees. So you can demonstrate that their sum is going to be zero. Here we have a representation of what we call the phase voltages UA, UV, and UC, and what we call the line voltages, UAB, UBC, and UCA. In general, we are going to use the neutral point of the generator as reference voltage. So that point is usually grounded. That means that it is connected to Earth. We had that represented here in the previous slide, where you have point N and its ground connection. Here, the line voltages, they can be obtained as the difference between the phase voltages. For instance, in the case of voltage AV, its value could be obtained as the difference between UA and UB. If you have a look at the diagram here, UA has zero as angle that is expressed by a direction of 1 plus J0, only horizontal component. UV here, its angle is minus 120. So if we calculate the cosine and the sine of that angle, minus 120, we will get to this direction represented by this phasor. The result is this one here. 
So, line voltage UAV has U multiplied by a square root of 3 as absolute value and its angle is 30 degrees. Here you have the value of the line voltage UAV. We can do exactly the same with line voltage BC, the difference between UV and UC. Here you have the direction of the particular phasor, okay, of each of the phase voltages, and that was obtained as the cosine of the angle in the real part and the sine of the angle in the imaginary part. If you do the calculation, you are going to get to this value here. UVC, UVC has an absolute value of U multiplied by a square root of 3 and its angle is minus 90 degrees. So this phasor here. We do the same with UCA, difference between UC and UA, and you will get 2U multiplied by a square root of 3 and its angle is 150 degrees, this phasor here. So as you can see, the line voltages, they have an absolute value, an equal absolute value of u multiplied by a square root of 3, where u was the absolute value of the phase voltages. These three line voltages, they are also shifted with an angle of 120 degrees. That means that their sum is also zero, as it happened with the phase voltages and with the currents, as we have explained in previous sections. In our country, the phase voltages, they have an effective value of 230 volts, and the line voltages, if we multiply square root of 3 by 230, we are going to get a value which is approximately 400 volts. Here you have example one. Let's see how is the resolution process for this example. Hi everyone. Now we are in example one of lesson two, which is three phase circuits. Here we have a three phase circuit with star connection and we have a balanced load. That means that the impedance in each phase of the three-phase circuit has the same value. In this case, in this case, 10 plus J5 ohms. So what do they ask here? Well, they want that we calculate the value of the line current A, line current B, and line current C. As you know, the currents are generated in these three generators that you have here. They pass through the load and then they return through the neutral conductor there. Okay? So we have to obtain the individual value of the line current and then the value I m that you can understand that it would be the sum of the three line currents. So let's start. In this example, we are going to consider phase voltage in phase A as reference phase. What is that? Okay, we are going to use that phasor as reference phasor, that means angle of zero degrees. If you remember, the phase voltage is related with the line voltage by this expression. You have in your statement of the problem that the line voltage AB is 400 volts. So, if you divide 400 volts by a square root of 3, the approximate value that you will get is 230 volts. There, this phase voltage here is 
230 zero volts. Okay? This value, this phasor here is UV and this angle is minus 120 degrees. So phase voltage B would be 230 minus 120 degrees volts in polar rotation. And here we are going to represent phase voltage C, whose angle is 120 degrees positive in this case. And that would be 230, 120 degrees volts. So, in order to start, we can use the Ohm's law. Each phase here is going to work as an independent single phase circuit. That means that here we can apply Ohm's law and then we can say that the line current in A is the ratio of the phase voltage divided by impedance y in this case, okay? So to do this, it would be useful to have the impedance expressed in polar notation because here we have the impedance in binomial notation. So first of all, we introduce here the voltage, 230 zero volts. And here we are going to obtain the impedance in polar notation. That is, we need its absolute value, 10 to the square plus 5 to the square, okay? That is approximately 11.18. And we also need the angle. The angle, remember that it was, it was arc tangent of 5 divided by 10. And that is approximately 26.57. Degrees. So there we can introduce the value of the impedance in polar rotation. This gives a value of the line current A equal to 20.57 minus 26.57 degrees expressed in R. Now that we have the line current in phase A, we need the same in phases B and C. Let's start with B. Applying Ohm's law, it would be the voltage divided by the impedance. And as we are in the case of a balanced load, the impedance is exactly the same. And the voltage, as we said before, is 230 minus 120 degrees in volts. So that gives a value of line current B of approximately 20.57, same absolute value as before, but now the angle is this one. To obtain the value of current C, we have to do exactly the same. In this case, with impedance 3. Same impedance as before. And in the numerator, we have 230, 120 volts. So, in this situation, the result would be around 20.57 and the angle 93.43 arms. So here we have the three values of the line currents. Now we need to obtain the current in the neutral conductor. For obtaining the current in the neutral conductor, we need to sum the three line currents that we have calculated before. So, if we introduce the results, we will have this. But this is expressed 
in polar notation. So if you introduce this in your calculator, if, and your calculator is configured to work in polar notation, then your calculator will give you the value of the current in the neutron. If you don't have a calculator which can work with polar notation, then you should change from polar to binomial notation. How would you do that? Well, here we have the absolute value and the real part would be the cosine of the angle and the imaginary part would be the sine of the angle. So this is the binomial representation of the first current. If we do the same with currents B and C, we will get a result of zero amps for the neutral current. That is something that we have explained in the notes in the contents of lesson two. The sum of the three currents as they are shifted an angle of 120 degrees, we can demonstrate that the sum is always zero. And that is true when we have a symmetrical system where the voltages, the phase voltages, are shifted 120 degrees and they, are, uh, they have the same absolute value. And also, we also need to have balanced load. So in that situation, when the load is balanced and the voltages are the same in absolute value and shifted an angle of 120 degrees, then we are going to have that the current in the neutron is equal to zero. Now, let's solve question B. In question B, they say that uh, cable B is good. So in that case, we don't have current B flowing through this cable and through this load anymore. There is no current here. Then, here, in the neutral conductor, we are not going to have current B, and we are only going to have the sum of currents A and C. As you can imagine, currents A and C, these line currents, will be equal than in question A, because nothing has changed regarding these currents. The voltage, the phase voltage is equal and the impedance is equal. That means that current A remains being 20.57 minus 26.57 ohms and current C, line current C, remains being this. So now, when we obtain the current in the neutral conductor, we have to assume these two phases. So, if you sum current A plus current B, then you can change to binomial notation. You are going to get this result here. If you change to binomial notation and you sum currents A and C, you are going to get this result here. If after that you change this again to polar notation, you are going to have a result which is around this one. Does this look familiar to you? Well, this, this is exactly the same as minus the current that was absorbed by this load in phase B. So, when one phase is good, we have that the sum of the currents in the neutron is no longer zero, and we are going to have a flowing of current, flow of current in the neutral conductor. That is why, when we have an imbalance or any kind of problem with one phase, we should have the neutral conductor in order to guarantee that we have a path for the current to return to the origin of the installation.